All right. now so how's everybody doing we got a few people on <laughs> so just a heads up I am trying a totally different setup today so uh, fingers crossed this goes well um, sure we get all the right devices muted and unmuted but uh, yeah should be a lot of fun so um, today I'm going to attempt to sketch I know last time we did this I was uh, I was just using glyphs because it was easier to be on screen but I figured I'd throw uh, a bunch of different uh, changes here so uh, we've got a webcam today we've got um, all sorts of things going on so hopefully hopefully this works as I, I had intended and hoped um, but hopefully everyone uh, is doing well today. It's a nice, uh, nice Saturday where I'm at, so hopefully the same is for you. And before we get too far here, I'm just gonna go through and make sure we've got some type cookers loaded up here. So one thing I I had done before we started was actually went ahead and um, pre-made a few. I did five, so we'll see if that works. Hey, Kelsey, good to see you. Hopefully everybody's excited to get started. Um, <clears throat> I am waiting just a little bit here. Um, I know we have, typically on my streams, people tend to show up a little late, so I can get started right away. Um, yeah. Are you going to be drawing today? That's the big question, Kelsey. <laughs> I've been uh, attempting to uh, encourage a bunch of people to draw today, so we'll, we'll see how many go for that. And for those just joining, uh, a couple things here. Number one, I've got a few things on my desk right now. I can go through this uh, before I get started, but I feel like every time I join one of these, whether it's it's me or somebody else, the number one question is, is always what tools are you using? So I figured I'd just have that out while we're waiting here. Um, if you are new to this, this is your first time. Um, so hello, I'm Daniel. Um, nice to see everybody. And basically the idea here is I've got a few type cookers queued up um, and naturally I'll be drawing or attempting to draw these. And uh, I'm welcoming anybody else in the chat who's watching along uh, to put your own spin on this and, and give it a shot as well. I think this is a little bit more fun when, uh, when everybody participates, but it's totally up to you. There's no pressure um, if you just want to hang out and, and watch me draw, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, awesome here. New pil uh, Pilot Parallel Pens, yes, I love those. And um, funny thing, that is, one, <laughs> that is one thing I did not pull out. Um, I've got this huge, I'll probably just show this uh, in my little screen here, but I've, I've got like this whole thing of, of pens and whatnot. It's always difficult just to pick one or two. <laughs> to use, um, but I'm keeping it simple today with just a few pencils. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, where I was going with this as I kind of jump around, um, I am encouraging everybody, if, if you are drawing, uh, definitely share this stuff on social. Uh, if you do share it on Instagram in particular, uh, tag me, and I will attempt at the end, and I use attempt very strongly. <laughs> Uh, to see if I can share some of these if, if you send me a link or if I see that I got a tag on Instagram because um, I think it's kind of fun to to share um, what everyone else is working on. Uh, if it doesn't work out at the end of the stream today, I'll probably just go and reshare them in my stories so at the very least we've got that. But uh, 
yeah, very excited to see uh, to see what we do here. So, um, yeah, I'm just probably gonna jump in then. Um, I imagine more people will will hop in along the way, but um, to get started, I'm just gonna quickly go through what I've got here so uh, people kind of know what I'm working with. Uh, number one, this is a uh, Kawako SketchUp 5.6 millimeter uh, pencil. This is all lead. Um, see, I'm kind of hold this up a little bit closer here. Um, and I've been in love with this thing. It is a bit of a heavier uh, pencil, but I kind of like that when I draw. I tend to draw with a heavier hand. <laughs> Let's see if I can get my, my thing to uh, autofocus there. Um, but I've really been enjoying this, and um, yeah, it's, it's kind of fun to play with. I know some people actually shape the end of the, the lead a little bit. I haven't, um, but that is an option. So that's one. Uh, the next thing, I'll just kind of keep these in order here. Um, I do have a lead holder here, and um, alongside the lead holder, I've also got the sharpener. Uh, mostly just using this because it's easier to handle on stream than a full on pencil sharpener. <laughs> Um, I think this is, what is this, like a 2 mil lead or something like that. Um, it is a bit of a thicker lead, but works really well. Great for detail work. Uh, and then last here I've got, uh, these are just a couple of erasers, and um, you'll, you'll kind of see, I'm getting used to having a lead, or a, an additional cam here, an overhead cam. Um, but one is a Tombow Mono Zero, that's this top one here. It's got just kind of a tiny eraser head on it. And then the other one is a Tombow Mono Zero, but it's got more of like a rectangular shaped one. Um, I know some people, when they do type cookers, they have a whole thing about just not making mistakes or embracing mistakes. Um, I try to, but sometimes they just get too much. <laughs> um, the next one here, this is an Alvin AL666 lettering guide. And uh, what's cool about this is it's got this this kind of spinny, rotatey top thing going on here. Um, there's a 90 degree edge, and then there is a 68 degree edge on the side here if you want to do italics. Um, but what I like about this is there's a number of little holes all throughout here um, that you can go through. You can drop uh, a, a pen or a pencil point in one of these and basically create lettering guides. Um, and I've really fallen in love with this thing, and uh, what's cool is I think you can find these things pretty cheap too, so um, that's what this is. Of course we've got the ruler, uh, and then if I am erasing I do have this massive uh, brush, uh, which I keep telling myself someday I'm going to find a smaller one, but alas, I haven't. So um, yeah, and then the last thing here that I've been kind of hiding with all my tools on top uh, this is just a House Industries uh, tracing pad, and um, I'm sure some people are probably familiar with this, especially if you've watched any uh, House Industries stuff, but what's kind of cool about this, if I take my ruler and, and hide it behind there, uh, this is great for layering, and usually if I'm really getting into a type cooker or a sketch, um, I like being able to see what I'm drawing underneath, so I might do a sketch over the top here. Um, and then, you know, if I kind of like where it's going or I want to clean it up or change some things, I can just put another piece of paper over the top of it, keep sketching and refining it. So that's kind of the idea with that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hide all of that and uh, kind of get myself situated here a little bit so we can make this work. Um, I think what I'm actually going to do just to start here. I have no idea how big or how small I have to draw. So I'm just going to kind of wing this a little bit. Um, something like this. I also have a habit of, of uh, leading over a little bit too much when I draw. So if you are in chat and my head starts kind of covering things, um, just shout. I am keeping. I'm keeping the chat up here so I can see what's going on. Um, Alright, I'm just going to do a couple other things here real quick. We're totally going. Make sure we're good here. Right. Make sure we leave the water before we get too far. That off. 
Last thing we want is noise. Uh, <laughs> okay. So let's see, what do I have? Um, I just kind of randomly pulled up. Clippers were here, so <clears throat> all right. It looks like the first one we've got, and by the way, I'm just doing easy today. Um, and a, a couple reasons for that number one, um, I just want it to be as inclusive as possible to everybody uh, who's drawing today, so I didn't want to get carried away with, with something beyond this. Uh, starter, I've often found gets a little bit too basic uh, for stuff like this. Um, I kind of find I find that easy is just kind of a happy medium, but feel free if something is is too complex or too challenging, um, you're welcome to change it up. Um, you know, kind of do your own thing. Um, but at the very least, we kind of have a common uh, a common type of sorts to work off of. Uh, and yeah, let's see. So we're generating. Also got one of those as well. Uh, for today, I'm just going to be doing four-letter words. Um, I think last time I was doing five, but uh, for the sake of just kind of keeping things moving a little bit, uh, we're going to go with that just so uh, I can kind of draw fast. Um, you're free to uh, use the same word as me. If you want to change things up, feel free. Um, if today's wordle is of... Uh, inspiration to you, you can go for that. I have not seen today's world well, so don't spoil it. <laughs> My wife might be kind of mad if I get it in one. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to... I think I'm just going to maybe find a, a simple one to start with. And um, dive in. So, I think I'm going to go with the word home. Um, we'll just go and write that up in the upper corner here, so if you want to follow along, you can. The, uh, the word back up here. Alright, so, plain weight, all caps. Some contrast translation very wide and serous will be our first one here. Um, today I'm not going to do a timer. <laughs> I did that last time. I think that caused more stress than anything. But uh, if you do want to time yourself, just let me know in the chat. Um, maybe there's one that we'll we'll go ahead and we'll do a uh, a timed one maybe at the end just for fun. We'll see how fast we sketch. But. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll just jump in. So, since this is all caps, I'm just going to use two um, two guys here. I think you can kind of see it on screen a little bit. I probably could draw this a little bit darker for the next one. But, um, just kind of jump in. So. I'm going to kind of make this thing a little bit... Too. The other thing I've got to figure is how I'm going to keep this all on the page. <laughs> that is the challenge with drawing is, um, yeah, I'm going to run out of space here, but we'll kind of own that a little bit, I think. So this might not be extra, extra wide. I suppose I could have made this shorter as well, but um, we'll roll with it. Typically the way I go about this is just trying I'm just gonna try and loosely get this worked in. Again, translation, so I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of keeping my arm at a little bit of an angle. Alana, hello! Good to see you! 
How's things been? And more importantly, are you sketching today? <laughs> Let's just give you my question for everybody. So apologies if I'm calling everybody out. I'm excited to see though how many people decide to, uh, to sketch today. Think too. I can kind of get away with some bigger serifs here, and I might just do some chunky serifs. Maybe they even crash into each other. This is uh, this is definitely going to be a um, a display face, so we can we can establish that early on. Let's see what else. Mm. Lettering's always fun. You know, I, f I feel like I started that once upon a time and then um, just kind of lost interest in it. Do you get to say what, what kind of lettering you're working on or is it top secret? So I may twist my paper around. Um, I will attempt to try and keep it somewhat straight. I actually have just off screen a bunch of tape marked off. I really should um, take a picture of this for social when we're done. But, um, but hopefully, hopefully this stays on screen pretty well. So let's see. Just try and rough in details. By the way, even though I um, I pre-did all these type cookers so that we didn't have to, to fuss with it um, on stream, I did not put any thought into what I could draw on today. Um, we're just kind of doing this in real time, so... We'll, we'll see how this goes. Just for fun. Ooh, future merch. I'm all about the future merch. I love my uh, Chaos pin, by the way, the Chaos group pin. That's still probably one of my most favorite things that, they, uh, that I've seen a letter or a typographer create. So. And for those who aren't familiar, um, you can go find Alana's channel. It should be linked on my uh, the main page of my Twitch here, but um, she's got some awesome merch that you absolutely need to check out. And I have no problem hawking my friend's merch on here because I have none. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll let other people get the benefit of that. Um. So I guess I'm kind of going for a traditional serif here. Um, and I don't know how much longer I'm going to... Yeah, no problem. Um, the stickers are cool too, by the way. We'll, we'll throw that <laughs> so I don't really know that this is extra wide or very wide. Um, which I probably should have done that better. I think what I'm going to do is kind of reduce the start. We're going to add some weights here. One other benefit, if you've never tried this with a thicker pen before or pencil, um, is that you really can't get detail with this, uh, which it sounds counterintuitive, but um, it's actually kind of nice because usually I'm the kind of designer for a, a draw where I, I'm always trying to get this detail right away. Um, and what's nice is that you really can't when you have a big chalky pen for pencil, so. So with translation O, I probably should have that and maybe roughly that at the same weight. Kind of get these two opposite corners here and here about the same.
know if anybody else struggles with this, but bows are actually really anything wrong in the drawing because it's such a challenge. Actually, one other thing I want to Um, so one thing, as I'm jumping off screen here, um, you probably can't even see this, but it's actually just a, pla a plain plastic sheet. Um, and the reason that I like this is, uh, unlike paper, you can actually see underneath, um, and then I'm not making a giant mess when I draw. So, I don't know if any of these pro tips help, but, uh, I, I do what I can. <laughs> um, let's see. So now for the end, I have my brain into backwards mode here a little bit. So erase that. So this needs to be a bit thinner. I'm just kind of, I guess I'm kind of almost making a literature. That piece. There we go. Um, and then, just kind of take the dots a little bit, I think. I'm not connected to Cheat a little bit here, just a little bit more. I also have a smaller ruler too, so we're gonna go with that. But I just kind of want to get some sort of decent angle there. Yeah, probably something more like that, and. Small ruler for the win. This may still be a little bit too small, but, or too big, I should say. I'm always thinking that just a little bit. Trick I've been uh, I've been learning by the way. Um, so I don't know if, if anybody else or, or you know we've obviously got a couple experienced people in the chat don't type before, but um, anybody in there is uh, new to type design. One thing I've realized is it's always tempting when you're drawing something like an E to make this a 90 degree corner up here. Um, but I've noticed, I've been studying some type, that if you actually kind of curve that in a little bit, um, I don't know, it, maybe this is just me, but it kind of adds something. Um, I think it kind of balances out the serif in this case. In the end. Um, but I kind of like how that, that manages that or, or does that. All right. I'll we'll just go through. Kind of working. There we go. And again, we're just kind of keeping things a little bit rough right now. 
but we can kind of tune things up a little bit as we go here. So, I think that's going to be all for this one. Here. All right, now for the fun. So, so go in front of some of these lines. I am going to kind of work fast here, so this isn't going to be all the way refined like I, I probably normally would. Um, for the stream, for having fun. Probably what I would do maybe after we're done here, I probably would go and maybe do a few more refinements here. Make it a little bit prettier. Side of the, uh, the plastic sheet, though, is it does get staticky, so I do feel compelled to point that out. So naturally, there's a trade off, but. So I think that's fairly decent. Um, so yeah, um, I also just kind of have to look at my monitor off to the side here because uh, yeah, sometimes the light kind of shines on this just right. I think what I'm going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to start filling this in. If you were curious, like every other type designer, hand letterer, etc., on the internet, I absolutely am inspired by Ken Garber when I fill in my uh, letter forms like this. So. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, truthfully, they were inspired by you, by the way, and they are very good. So I'm glad I made the update. And as you probably guessed, I um, I did go ahead and, and do the microphone as well. So uh, no no mic off of these, but um, I have been enjoying them. So I appreciate the uh, recommendation that you didn't really gave me, but <laughs> they are very comfy. Um, truth be told, I had Bose headphones before these, um, but it wasn't a very good experience with them. They were. Uh, they were just kind of being clunky, not working, cutting out. Um, I'm very impressed with the Apple ones. Already I can tell I kind of botched the O a little bit. This goes back to that part where I, I told everybody that I kind of struggled with the uh, circles. But, um, yeah, it looks good. Enough. To uh, to steal a line from my days in video, like actual video production, we'll clean it up in post. I guess we'll clean it up in post. <laughs> 
yeah, Kelsey, the, uh, the noise cancellation was a, a game changer. Um, I also, it's probably similar to the background music. Um, I, I listen to a lot of electronic music too. So uh, that's especially nice. But um, the big thing is, is like I live next to a busy street. And it's amazing how much noise that that will cut out. I just kind of get transported to my own, <laughs> my own wonderland. The mute button is for your kids. <laughs> yes. Um, it kind of makes you wonder, like, how our parents dealt with us, right? They didn't have fancy noise canceling headphones. I'm sure there was many times where they, uh, they probably wish they would have, right? Or maybe people were, uh, other people in the chat here were more angels and more kids than I was. Another thing I'm doing here, actually. That. I'm trying to rotate my pen while I'm doing this as well. Um, just to try and keep a sharper edge on it. And the funny part is is that I've been kind of telling myself I should be doing this for so long and I'll always forget until I'm apparently on the last letter here. So. There we go. I don't think that turned out too bad. It may have kind of deviated a little bit from, uh, from the recipe. I have to kind of go back and, and see how much I stuck to it. It's kind of one of those things where uh, staying on the page kind of had a little bit of priority there. But. Some of that mess a little bit that I made. There we go. Fancy brush, swoosh swoosh. Um, trying to center this up a little bit more here. Trying to do it without everything spilling off the table, but uh, not too bad. Um, if I were to give myself a quick critique here. I'd say the, uh, the O probably could use a little bit of help. The spacing doesn't seem too terrible. Um, probably could work on some character widths too. I'd say the O, out of all of this, probably needs the most help more than anything. <laughs> but um, yeah, not too bad. It was a, a pretty good warm-up too, if I say so myself. Um, yeah. Very, uh, very curious to see how everyone else got along with that one. So, I'll leave this up for a little bit. I won't just race into the next one if anybody else is finishing the sketches up. <clears throat> and uh, in chat, tell me too, how are we liking this setup, by the way? Um, I did kind of throw a bunch into this, because um, I, I think this is actually the first stream I've ever really shown my face on screen. Usually I just do this for if I'm doing a workshop or something like that. Um, this is the first time I think I've actually done it on stream. I don't think I mind it, um, but uh, yeah, I'm always open to suggestions, thoughts, etc. So, uh, probably when we're done, I will um, bring all these back up on screen here, but for the time being, it's going to go off to the side, and I think if everybody is ready or not, <laughs> maybe we'll go on to the next one here. So, what is the next one? Um, 
And I will add, I, um, I queued this up, but, uh, I have no idea what order this is in. I think I hit random, so hopefully we don't, we don't redo the same one. Um, yeah, great. Um, yeah, the, the, more than anything, the overhead cam was, like, my biggest concern, um, if that would work or not, because this is actually just an iPhone that's doing the work up here. Um... But yeah, if we like this, I'm also happy to do more streams like this in the future as well. Um, I know everybody loves glyphs, and, and we'll get back to some of those as well, but uh, this is actually doing pretty decent, so good to know. Awesome. Um, Alright, so next up, some contrast a normal width, which uh, hopefully that should help. Um, Expansion, Roman, straight, no serif, so basically sans serif. So basically a bold sans serif in the expansion um, construction. And I think we're going to do upper and lower case as well, so. Perfect. Yes, um, absolutely incorporate the uh, overhead cam. I think it's kind of fun. I think um, actually Sophia was doing that, uh, which I know she's just doing glyphs, but I think it's kind of fun to see, like, what are your shortcuts and everything that you're using. Um, I also use a Wacom tablet as well, so I think some people are kind of mesmerized by that. But I think it's kind of fun, like, we often see just what's going on on screen, but... Um, or the, I know there's even some designers that actually just use the uh, trackpad on their computer, which I think is kind of wild. Um, yeah, I think that'd be kind of fun. Alright, so I need a new word. And uh, we're going to do upper and lower case for this one, so... I'm just finding one that... Uh, I think it would be kind of fun to draw. Yeah, um... Who was it? I may have to think on that, but I was watching... I think it was on YouTube. It was a YouTuber. And they were literally... It was straight up trackpad drawing letters. Um, which was wild. Like, I, I don't know how you have the patience for that, but... Uh, but they did. Great. So I think for a sans, we're gonna. And where am I bigger? I think I'm gonna go with. I really just need to pick one, don't I? Um, you know what? We'll go with it. Chat. This one's for everybody in chat. <laughs> um, that was up on screen, so why not, right? Yeah, hundred percent hard mode. Um. Yeah, the funny part, before I, I get too carried away here, is, um, like, this is actually what I use. It's just, it's a small tablet here, <clears throat> and and for the record, this is U.S. letter size, the, the paper I'm drawing on, or roughly A4, so this isn't by, by any stretch of the means a gigantic tablet, but this is how I always draw, um, and I've seldom ever used a mouse, which, yeah, I know that's not for everybody, but... It's kind of fun. So yeah, a little bit like the mouse people. Um, the draw, it's like, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> so I'm going to draw my guidelines a little bit thicker here. Hopefully this shows up a little bit easier on stream. Um, also... Oops. Tiny bit taller as well without. I actually do have a, a, a really funky ruler that uh, is supposed to be good for this, but. Um... Yeah, there we go. Close enough. I think I was kind of bumped. Bumped my guide here a little bit, but that's fine. Um. See, tall X height, short X height, medium X height. Kind of 
be on tall. Let's do a taller accent. As we can. We'll roll with that. I think that should show up a little bit nicer on, on screen too now. Usually I'd keep my grids pretty light, but um, yeah, let me know if this, uh, this works a little bit there. Yeah, the, uh, this is that Elven lettering guide. I don't know if you caught that earlier. Um, I guess since I mentioned it, I can pull this out. I kind of don't like using this uh, ruler just because it can be a bit finicky at times, but um, there's this as well, um, which is nice because you can you can draw one, and then there's actually this is a wheel, um, so it keeps it parallel. Um, I've seen somebody use this before, um, and it's kind of nice. But the thing that that bugs me is I lose this much of my my page if I'm drawing. I suppose I could always flip it upside down as well, but then it's kind of the same in the opposite direction. But it is kind of fun to play with. So I just kind of stick with the lettering guide. Plus, it's easy if I ever, uh, if I'm ever out. Uh, we've been doing in the Bay Area uh, a couple of of type cooker slash lettering crits, um, which has been a lot of fun in person. Um, which you know, ping me on social if you're interested in that. But uh, yeah, it's it's kind of handier just to have this versus a a giant ruler when you go to one of those. So anyway. Uh, I'm also kind of droning on a little bit. Alright, so we're doing the word chat. And uh, make this bold and expansion. So I'm going to rotate my page a good amount here. And uh, I'm kind of hoping I'm going to start all the way to this time. And I'm just going to make this. I'm also just doing all display today. And I think yeah, width was normal, so I guess I can kind of determine what what normal is. But um, uh, let's see here. The A and the... Oh. Maybe I should just take inspiration from that, honestly. Um... see how that works and this may not this may not do exactly what I want to do but I guess we'll find out um, I think I'll want something like that and then for the T I think actually the A could even be a little bit thicker. Oh yeah, maybe something like that. to be a little bit thicker, of course. Just coming right through here. 
Mostly seeing, I think I kind of have these about, about the width that I want. Spacing looks okay-ish. Um, yeah, we'll kind of roll with this, I think. Um, let's see what happens here. I know people usually don't see some of the, uh, the stuff that I draw uh, off stream, or even off one for that matter, that I don't share on uh, social, but um, I am kind of making an attempt here to, to draw more stuff that I just haven't been doing lately, so we'll see how that works for me, but um, yeah, more than anything, I'm just trying to keep this a bit loose right now. that effect, I am probably actually just going to jump in a little bit sooner with the, the finer pencil as well here. Unlike the uh, serif I don't want there's really much to uh, deal with here, so just kind of roll with this. Circle game is already kind of improving a little bit, or my round shape game is kind of improving a little bit. I know there's all sorts of things, you know, you're supposed to uh, rotate this stuff around a little bit more than I am, which probably makes it easier to draw some of these shapes, but so just want to make sure I'm staying on screen as well. <laughs> thinking too open to thoughts um, as I'm thinking about Ken Barber or being inspired by people doing lettering stuff in chat. Um, maybe that could be something I do for a future stream um, where this is a little bit more of a, a polished finished piece not necessarily a, a type clipper. Um, I will caveat that it has been a long time since I've done lettering. Um, but let me know if that's something you want to see. may have a little bit of difficulty resolving that, uh, that curve, too. Thicker as well. There we go, something like that. Um, 
Now for the A, I did kind of flatten it off uh, here, and um, I think that was kind of what I had in mind. We'll see if this actually works out the way I thought it would. Just ever so slightly, a little bit of uh, overshoot there. It's kind of a goofy shape, though, isn't it? Basically what I was thinking is that the counter is effectively a backwards capital D is the plan. Making sure that this and this kind of exist. It does get a little bit messy there, but I'm kind of rolling with that. And then actually, I'm thinking for the T here. I always, I'm not a big fan of just doing it like a basic cross for a T, even a sans serif. I know that's like a perfectly valid way of doing it, it's just not what I was doing. So let's give it a little bit of shape. That kind of works out. Just gives it a little bit of interest, maybe a little bit of a kind of an unexpected twist. Who knows? So, go through here real quick. We'll get some of this cleaned out. Color this in and see what we got. those sketching in chat, um, how are things looking? <laughs> and I'm curious too, like obviously I'm, I'm doing this word, um, is anybody doing their own word? Or are we all kind of doing the same word? I will add, I usually draw a little bit smaller than this. Um, I'm drawing this size because I also wanted to keep the overhead camera out of the uh, webcam shot. So. 
uh, and I'm not even sure how I zoom on this. Um, I'm sure there's a way, but I didn't figure it out in time, so I'm just kind of rolling with it. Same word, going okay, awesome. Hello, Type Design BK. Good to see you here. Are you drawing along as well, or are you just kind of hanging out and watching today? You finally made it to the stream. To be fair, after uh, our first type cooker uh, stream a few weeks ago, I had a lot of people mention uh, that they just wanted some better times. So uh, my challenge is that I'm a U.S. Pacific Coast time. Um, as it turns out, I, I have a lot of people who want to watch uh, from all around the world, so I figured Saturday morning streams might be uh, might be the way to go. Um, I don't know if my audience is much of the going out on Friday and, and partying late, um, but it seems like this is working out pretty good, so um, I may stick with this, at least for, for the time being. I figured it's kind of tough on... Uh, on the weekdays, especially as people have work schedules or things of that nature. But uh, to Saturday or Sunday mornings, probably at least a good time on my side of the planet. Maybe you've got a, a quiet Saturday afternoon or something like that. Just you watching. You're working on a project too. That's super cool. Fun project. Kelsey, yeah, same word. Excellent. If you do share, let me know. Um, very excited to see how some of these other other drawings and sketches turn out. There we go. Word number two. I just realized my camera probably shakes more than it should. I might have to invest in a stronger, um, a stronger arm. It's it's one of these bendy arms that I have my camera on. But um, yeah, there we are. So yeah, I guess I, I kind of I glanced over the some contrast thing, but somewhat normal width expansion, Roman. Straight no serif and bubble. So. Let's see here. A big serif text display family for a Polish government organization. That sounds super exciting. I have to ask too, is it a little bit nerve wracking when it's for like a government organization? And I only ask, I remember during uh, Type Weekend one year we had a, a presenter who was. They were doing work for the Australian government or Australian TV or something like that. I, I totally I'd have to go look it up again, but um, I remember they had some challenges because when you're working for government, obviously there's a, a number of factors that you uh, you have to keep in mind. It's, it might not be like working just with a, a corporate client. It sounds really cool though. Yeah, so for the next step for this, um, I guess for today's stream, this is, is going to be where I leave it. Um, but what I was mentioning a little bit earlier when we initially started, 
um, this paper that I'm using. Just kind of pull this aside real quick, kind of do a recap here. Um, it's uh, actually I did this one. It's the House Industries tracing pad that uh, I'm working with today. So um, I think this is usually for sale almost all the time on their site. Um, but what I like about it, if I took my ruler here, is it's actually uh, kind of like a, almost like a vellum. Um, and it's got like a lower tooth to it as well, or a bite, I guess, however you describe the smoothness of paper. But uh, if I were to continue this particular... Oops, was it dropping right now? Um, if, I, uh, if I were to continue this, probably what I would do is uh, do another layer over the top of this, and then maybe go back with another pencil, clean some things up, maybe I would change things a little bit, work on spacing uh, my letters out a little bit better. Um, but the nice part is that I can continue to uh, refine this until I get it to a place that I like. Um, so yeah, that's usually the next steps. But uh, for a stream, we're just having fun today. So that's, uh, that's probably as far as I'm going to push this. Maybe offline, if, if there's one of these that, that turns out uh, in, in a way that I like, we can push it a little bit more. But we'll see. So, I think I had that up for a little bit of, or enough time I should say. Are we ready for the next one? Go ahead here, we'll hit the next button. Canvas desk line. Is that the one, Kelsey? Um, where it's like the phone, it's like it's got its own ring light. I think I might have been looking at that one and considering it. I was kind of curious how it worked. And especially for drawing too, I suppose that'd be uh, even better because then you actually get like uh, light. Because right now I've got a light coming this way, which is mostly lighting me. I've got another light that's coming this way. Um, yeah, I might have to look at that when we're done here <laughs> if I'm doing more of these. I don't think this is working too bad. I do get a little bit of shadow, but it's it's the shaking as I draw. I don't know how anyone else draws, but I've kind of got like a heavy hand when I draw. Um, so it makes it a bit of a challenge, especially when I've when I've got this set up because um, things move around quite a bit. So maybe that'll be my investment post stream. <laughs> All right, so I did put up the uh, the next one that we'll be doing here. Um, which one did it pick? All right, so we've got visible contrast, uh, capitals, expansion, narrow, light, and so we're doing a sans serif again. Um, perfect. So, we got to find a word that we're going to use for this. And I'm going to do attempt to uh, maybe find a word that changes up some of the letters. Uh, let's see, this was all caps too, so keep that in mind. Um, And if anybody was asking, I'm just using like a Scrabble word generator kind of thing um, to come up with these. Uh, I don't have it up on screen just because my, my fear anytime I'm doing random stuff is that, you know, something dumb is going to appear on screen that I've got a sensor or something like that. So I figured I'd play it safe today and just, uh, just do this off screen. Um, Uh, 
How about we do the word tier? That will be all caps this time. Um, I'm kind of thinking light with visible contrast. Um, it might be a challenge, but I'm kind of roll with that. Uh, and actually, I know I said I wasn't going to use this earlier, but. I'm totally going to use the fancy ruler this time. Just because this is expansion, or uh, sorry, um, a narrow, narrow word. Um, we're just going to make this super tall. And rather than doing the north side sketch, I figured I would kind of change this up a little bit more. Um, so this method I learned <clears throat> through Jessica Hish, which um, I'm sure other people probably did this as well before before she started it, but or uh, before taught it. But uh, basically, it's going to be the skeleton method, which is most of the letters, all this kind of stuff. Um, the tough part is, is that I don't have. A ton to work off for spacing, but since this is a lightweight font, and these are mostly square letters, I think I can kind of get away with doing it this way. Plus, I just wanted to change it up, so. I think the bigger challenge will be. Um, Drawing a straight line for this one. Something like that. So the last one I did a little bit of a taller X height. And I know with capital letters you really don't do an X height per se, but with the E and the R I've got an opportunity to do something kind of fun. And I want to do something fun. So um, we're going to go in the opposite direction. Yes, we can. It probably just ends up being just like walking. But... Something like that. Something kind of fun, right? Um, I suppose technically I could leave it like this. I'm not gonna leave it like this. Um, but what I was thinking, um, I know this says visible contrast and I totally could stick with that. But I think what would be fun, because I just don't see enough of this, is um, to do a stencil. Change it up. What I'm going to do is we're just going to go through here and we're going to kind of trim out some spots here that make some sense. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go back and kind of make this all work. Because so. also, I don't even think I've done a stencil in some time. I know I've drawn them in the past, but. Um, why not? Change out. I think I still have the opportunity to add some contrast as well, but um, yeah, maybe something like that. And then what I was actually maybe that kind of curves down a little bit. It's a little bit of shape there, but yeah, this could be fun. No. This was straight no serif, which kind of means that I'm not 
really going to go through and add a ton of contrast. Um, just pulls in one hand, it kind of makes this a bit easier. <laughs> Uh, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of draw this a little bit like a stick figure. And we're just going to loosely add just a tiny bit of weight to each side. I'm just barely doing a little bit more than a, the width of my Type, how's it going? Good to see you. And you can drop in. Yeah, the big question that we're asking today is, is if you're drawing along, no pressure if you aren't, um, or if you're working on anything fun while you're watching. Just popping in. That is awesome. Always happy to see you here. Good news is, if you popped in, we've only gotten through uh, two type cookers so far, so. Pretty fun. Um, but yeah, I decided to uh, change things up a little bit for this next one here. So um, there's a lot less scribbling for this this one that you're seeing. I do feel like this would be kind of a fun, um, fun one to do, uh, to like actually build into a typeface. Not saying that everything I'm drawing here today is going to be a typeface, by the way. We'll, uh, we won't go that far, but. <laughs> Shedding a little bit as well as I would sweep the brush. Just don't see it. Go. Um, and then I think so. Obviously, I'm just using my my bigger. So I'm kind of going in and block this out, but what I'm thinking... So let me just go back in with my finer pencil here. I'm just kind of sharpen up some of these corners a little bit and we'll see, uh, see how we get this to turn out. Totally get these things 100% sharp. Perfect. Um, I didn't make too much of a mess. That is the downside to those lead holders. Is uh, gonna make a mess everywhere. But uh, let's see here. Yeah, basically what I'm after. Make this feel a little bit more finished. Sharpness. Mm 
And there's one thing I'll add too, like there are some classes that I've I've taken where we've done uh, tech covers and that kind of thing before where um, at least for the sake of time sometimes we were just kind of encouraged just to, to kind of fill in the, the main detail points. So like, I'm not worried too much about this. We kind of get that that would be a straight line. I think there might be enough there, but if you ever need a life hack for a uh, speeding up a type of a little bit, there you go. And then I think for the R, just gonna flatten it off at the end there. Just gonna bring that down to this point. Excellent. Probably did get a little bit too thick, but um, kind of like that. Just gonna kind of clean some of these up a little bit more. wasn't too terrible um, but yeah there we go it's kind of fun a little bit different so this one I think for the first time I actually got everything here so um, let's see contrast visible I think we can all agree that it's visible contrast all capitals expansion Seems like that worked out pretty well. Narrow width, looks pretty narrow. Lightweight, straight no serif. So, actually got through that one a little bit quicker than I expected, if I'm being completely honest. For those who are sketching, did anybody else attempt a, um, a stencil? Or are we all just kind of going with some regular sans serifs? I'm very curious to see what everyone else was doing. <laughs> Um, since I kind of went through this one a little bit quicker as well, um, and since there's a few more folks that are I've been noticing are kind of joining in as we go here, I figure I'll just do a quick recap uh, on some stuff uh, from the beginning of the stream. I'll probably go for, I think we've got, let's see, this was number three. I've got two more type covers left, um, and we can figure out if we want to do all five, or all five, or if we just want to do one or two more, or whatever, but um, anyway, because I, I get the question a lot. Uh, usually and stuff like this will kind of just push everything on screen around what I just drew. <laughs> Hopefully this works. Um, so I've got a few different tools up here. Uh, so um, what I was just working with was the uh, the lead holder here, the it's Stadler. Stadler. I, I don't know how to fully pronounce it, but uh, lead holder obviously with the accompanying uh, I think it's like a pointing sharpener, something like that. There's kind of a goofy name for it, but um, pro tip, as I almost did earlier in the stream, don't spill this because it makes a mess everywhere. Uh, the bigger pencil that you're seeing me work with, this is a, a 5.6 millimeter lead holder. Um, and I didn't mention this at the beginning of the stream. This is kind of a spendy one, but mostly because this is, I think, all extruded aluminum or something like that. You obviously don't have to spend a ton of money on these. You can get one for, for pretty cheap. Uh, I think I pay like 30 US uh, dollars for this though. But I personally like it because I like kind of the, the weight to this uh, while I draw. But what's nice is it's got a, a pretty thick uh, lead. I've seen some letters that actually shape these. Um, I guess I don't just because I was impatient uh, and I didn't want to buy sandpaper to do it. but. That is certainly an option. Um, naturally, we've got a ruler here. Um, 
I know uh, we, we had uh, Elena pointing this out a little bit earlier, but um, we've got a lettering guide here, which is kind of tough to see. Um, I probably should have planned for like a black background or something like that I could hold this against. But uh, what's co cool about this, you can find these pretty pretty cheap on uh, a whole bunch of different like art supply store sites or whatever. But um, effectively, it's got a number of little holes here all over and a spinny part uh, here as well. And one of these edges you can place against a ruler and basically um, you can kind of move around and create lettering guides or whatever. Um, I find this kind of handy particularly when I'm traveling because I can throw it in a case really easily or even just uh, slip it in a pad of paper like this or a notebook. Uh, but it's kind of fun. You can create a whole bunch of different grids with this. Uh, if you flip it on the side, um, which I'm probably not going to do the right way, but <laughs> there we go. Uh, I mean, what's cool is you can even do things like italic with it as well, um, which I kind of like. So I, I'd say if anything, if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend them. Uh, some stuff I had off screen here. Obviously, we have a brush here if you're doing any kind of erasing. Um, something like this is super handy. This is probably a little bit too large uh, for what I need, but I found it and it was cheap and it works. Uh, earlier, we also had uh, this contraption, which is similar to the lettering guide, um, but this is just a parallel ruler, I think is probably the best way to uh, phrase this. Uh, on the bottom here, this, this is actually a wheel that moves. Um, so you can draw a line, move it up and down, and it, it doesn't move. Uh, Kind of at an angle or rotate very easily on you. Um, so that's kind of handy, especially like when I was drawing tier here, where the lettering guide would have been too small for that. You can draw a couple quick lines with that and, and have some guidelines to work with. Uh, and then last, I'll just do a quick. Obviously, don't want my writing tools running away here, but if you were curious about the paper, we've got House Industries tracing pad. And as I was uh, pointing out a little bit earlier, um, I really like this because it's nice if you're drawing something. Just go back and grab one of my previous uh, drawings here. Uh, but it's great for layering. So if you were going to take this and um, you know maybe you were going to continue exploring an idea or you wanted to kind of change things up a little bit, um, it's basically like the real life version of layers in Photoshop. And I absolutely love it for that. So uh, that's everything that I am working with. And uh, the last note I had is uh, if you are drawing along with me today, um, I don't know if I have everything totally set up as I was kind of looking between uh, type cookers here to show things on screen. But at the very least, um, tag me in Instagram if you decide you want to share any of your sketches from today. I think it'd be a lot of fun to, to share those. I'll probably throw them up in stories or something like that. But it's always exciting to see uh, what everyone else is working on. Question, do I like iPad sketching or just digital or digital based drawing or do I stick to paper? Um, so truthfully, I do have an iPad. Um, I'm actually using it as the remote for the live stream right now, so I don't want to disrupt it too much. but. Uh, I have used things like Procreate, uh, and, um, I think there's one other one that I've got in there as well. It is kind of nice, particularly when I'm traveling, um, you know, you're sitting at the airport, you're waiting at your gate. I am that person who shows up an hour early, I don't know where everyone else falls in chat on that. Um, but that's super handy, I've got the Apple Pencil, um, it's nice to be able to just pull that out if I have a couple of ideas, you know, that I want to sketch, but I obviously don't have a space like this. Um, but that said, I mean, my my background, my education when I was in high school, I I did a lot of pen and paper sketching because obviously I'm dating myself a little bit, but, but iPads weren't a thing at the time and drawing on a computer was pretty primitive. Um, so I got used to just drawing like this. Uh, plus, I just, I love being able to invest in goofy tools like this um, or even making my own tools. Um, I've done that as well on a few streams. I don't think I have any... Uh, at the moment that I can just pluck out as I'm talking, but uh, I think it's kind of fun just to be able to make my own tools and, and draw like that, so I probably lean towards paper a little bit more just because I enjoy that, um, but I usually do both. And who knows, maybe for a future stream I can uh, 
we can pull out the iPad and, and go that route instead. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, but I will flip it around. Do you like iPad sketching, or are you are you the kind who sticks to paper? <laughs> And I'll open that up to chat as well, because I'm kind of curious. I think last time we had a number of uh, pen and paper, but um, I'm always curious if anybody's into the, the iPad stuff. I will say, though, it is kind of nice, as I'm waiting for answers here, it is kind of nice when, um, at least I've seen, when you're uh, doing lettering pieces in particular. Uh, I've seen a number of people who do really amazing uh, lettering compositions, especially in Procreate. Um, and I know there's a few few hand letters of varying levels of fame that uh, they're always sharing what they draw or things like that. So. And move to digital quickly. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I will say the thing that I do like about digital is that I feel like I can get more of a um, kind of like a finished piece or something that I can e easily move to glyphs or illustrator or something like that and work on. Um, Alright, I just realized too I probably should have been marking some of these off as we went, but uh, I didn't, so. <laughs> but I think I know which two we have left here, so. Uh, let's see. A narrow with quite some contrast. Seraph's bold translation in Roman. Alright. Um, and actually, the way the last one went, because we were doing an narrower one for that, I think I'm going to stick with the fancier ruler just so we can draw this a little bit larger. We'll do something like that. Since the last one was um, all caps, this didn't really say, but I think I am just going to do this isn't going to be as extreme as the other X heights were. Um, other thing, I'm just going to try this. This could be uh, Completely unnecessary, but I think it was in my head. I'm actually going to throw an extra line here. I don't have the word yet that I'm going to draw. But what I'm thinking with this line is if I'm drawing like an E, for example, I've got kind of a, a space I can aim for um, with crossbars or if it's an A or something like that. So it's, it's roughly halfway between the two. Um, We'll see if that works. Maybe it doesn't. Alright, and then I just need to choose the word. One other thing I'm doing is I'm attempting to uh, change things up with the letters that I'm picking as well, so. Um, what do we want? I'm kind of imposing some uh, just additional constraints on myself. Um, I think what I'm actually going to do, looking at this word right now, this does, well, yeah, we're going to go with this because I want to do a literature. Um, so the word I'm looking at is going to be flat. And I apologize because after I got done telling everybody that I was trying to avoid doing words uh, or let the same letter over and over again. Here we are with two of them. Um, yeah, because I had 18 chats, so 
Um, we, that does kind of mess it up a little bit, but I wanted to do the FL literature, so that's that was my reasoning. <laughs> so that's what we'll do next. Um, I think it'd be kind of fun to have the taller ascenders like that as well. So. Yeah, quite, um, just reading type design in case one here. Yeah, the type design uh, thing, it, it does feel like sometimes it even con uh, contrasts itself or contradicts itself, is probably a better word, a little bit. Um, I've certainly had some where, you know, if you, if you think about what it's after, it's like, it doesn't really make sense. Um, yeah, it's quite some contrast is not super accurate. Um, I would argue, though, one thing I, I do like with with goofy um, things like that is it, I, I like the idea that it leaves it up for interpretation a little bit. So if you're doing something like this where you've got multiple people, um, you know, doing a type cover together, then we're not all basically getting to the same result either, that there is some... Uh, there's some room for interpretation on that, so, but I get what you're saying. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> so I was doing the, uh, the skeleton thing last time, and if I'm being completely honest with chat, um, it was kind of fun, so I think I'm actually going to do that again. Um, I also just want to see how well this works for a, a bold translation. Um, so, uh, to do that... We're also going to want to leave a bit of space as well between these letters. <clears throat> but, um, that curve like that. Um, I'm actually going to space this out a little bit more too. Uh, originally would if it was, was <clears throat> narrower, but kind of what I'm thinking is that there's kind of a, a shape here of some sort. Um, that could spectacularly fail. But uh, or we'll go and see how it works. Um, let's see, and then for the A, just trying to think of ways to change this up a little bit from what we've done before. I was curious, but. I do something like that. I don't know. A single story this time. Just gonna kind of drop that down some. Yeah, and then I'll work the T in. Um, because what I was seeing as I was drawing that was um, making this bold. trying to think of how that would work with my spacing, because as it is, this feels too loose. Or could do. Maybe we just make it a little bit wider. Solve the problem that way. And kind of keep moving. always comes in handy. 
Alright, and then uh, for the tea, I think probably around there. Again for this. Just kick the tail out like that. It's just gonna have it's gonna have more width that way. I think that'll work. And there I am with my head in the, <laughs> the camera again. <laughs> Whoops, as I bumped the screen. Apologies about that. Alright, um so I think I think everything's kind of there. So then it's just a matter of determining the weight with this. Um, I think I'm actually, let's see, so it's translation. Um, which means that I'm probably going to put some there, and there. And I'm just kind of using these circles to thought is that this is also going to help make things somewhat uniform. Um, this is usually a trick that I use in uh, glyphs when I'm drawing stuff out. Um, it's a good way to kind of keep Keep all of your lines um, consistent. Your, your line needs consistent. Um, yeah, maybe something about like that. You may have to widen that area. Actually, a way that I can do that. Side or the other. Uh, I think for now I'm just gonna kind of leave that there and we'll just kind of see how this goes. Um, this could end in disaster by the way too. I'm not ruling that out. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm actually gonna go ahead and put thicker pen here. Um, and then basically then it's just Okay, I'm putting some lines in. Mm, the stroke endings were serif too, I guess I kind of ignored that a little bit, but I think I can go and add those in as we work them. Give me time to think about what I'm what I'm going to do for service too. So one thing I will say, um, and truthfully, I don't do type covers too often this way, where I draw a skeleton. But um, I, I will say that I do appreciate is that. I'm not just stuck with my um, the width of the tool that I'm using, and I do kind of like that actually. I've never set this up to do circles like this before, but um, oh, this is a fun way to work. At least for the F and the L, that's going to work well. Um, I think at this point I will go through. Um, 
what I'm thinking for Seros. Is uh, something a little bit short on that side. On the other. Uh, where my mind is going with this base really with um, some of Duigan's fonts. There's always kind of this this action of sorts where um, the pen would come down like this, but then it would uh, skate across. So the other serif kind of had more of that flat kind of resolution to it, so we call that. It seems kind of fun. Something a little bit different. By the way, Kelsey, I am totally getting the that test clamp that you mentioned, I think. Every now and then I look up at my screen as I'm like doing something and watching the screen just shake. I have to apologize to everybody for that. It's probably not what you signed up for. Um, <clears throat> but if you're still watching, I, I do appreciate that you're, uh, you're hanging in there with a, a shaky camera. I will do my best to minimize it as much as I can in the meantime. Um, let's see here. Uh, so the A did get off a little bit. Um, I think I still want some contrast out here, but I think we're going to be kind of correcting some things in real time to make this work. So. Overshoot there. And yeah, kind of what I'm thinking. At least this what was going. In, uh, this was the thought that was going through my head when I I saw what I was about to do. Spacing. So I'm just going to roll with this and hope that it works. Yeah, something like that. It's <clears throat> kind of what I was hoping for. Come to think that that's not a very traditional syrup either, but um, that's kind of funny. I also think it's probably going to be easier to move the uh, T over anyway. Um, Actually, I'm going to bring in my bigger eraser for that. So I'll try and do this gently. Um, but I think what I'm going to do... I'm going to leave the shape of this here, but I'm going to just kind of re-sketch it and move it over a little bit because I'm thinking... The, the very edge of it is more like here. More there, that's what I'm thinking would work. Mm 
taking that off with an exact knife real quick. Downside when you have graphite on the page, <laughs> it gums up your eraser super quick. That is kind of messy, but um, overall with it. There we go. So there you go, how I how I correct mistakes in real time. I think a little bit better. Do a nice 45 at the top there. Because why not? Clean it up a little bit. Yeah, so the spacing works a lot better there now. Um, that is, uh, this is one thing I will give. House Industries a lot of credit for is um, how easy this paper can be to erase. Really like see there it comes up a bit. <laughs> if you're wondering why I'm erasing, it's because I changed my mind about this part here a little bit. I think I do want it. To and crew down a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's got more of a shape that way. Alright. Um, so, with all that mess out of the way, I'm just going to go through and actually use my um, the bigger pencil here just to kind of fill this in. I'm hoping this kind of saves a little bit of time <laughs> and not, not uh, spending all stream just coloring in one level at this size. This actually does move a little bit. Uh, as far as chat goes, how's everybody's sketches coming along? anyone else attempting a ligature? Or maybe you went rogue and you're doing a totally different word. That's awesome, Kelsey. Did you try the FL ligature or did you go with a different one? I think this might be the goofiest <clears throat> serif A that I have ever done. It feels so weird to do a single story serif. <laughs> uh, yeah, you did FL. Awesome. I never realized that there are some people who feel strongly one way or the other towards ligatures. Um, and uh, particularly when I was uh, going through Type West um, and learning about other stuff. I think, and you can go and you can look on my YouTube channel too, and you can see all the 
uh, presentation that I did, but um, pretty much any chance I had to throw a ligature on something, I, I would go for a ligature. Um, and I'm, I'm interested to hear favorites, but I think for me, the one I absolutely loved doing was QU, a capital Q and a lowercase u. Um, just because I felt like that doesn't get much as much love as it should. <laughs> and I don't know if that's like a, a thing, just like, it's me, it's my style, uh, or maybe it's like my signature letter combination. Um, but it was, it was just fun just kind of throwing that down, um, especially when you write words like queen or something like that, and you get that little extra bit of flourish. Yeah, I'm just going to go in, kind of like I was doing a little bit earlier, kind of clean up some of these edges a little bit. I think the nice part sometimes is that this looks a little bit better on stream than it does on my desk, so I'll put that in mind too. Um, not, not too terrible. Um, again, I like kind of critiquing these, uh, critiquing myself as I go here. Um, at least kind of what I'm seeing. Um, yeah, it seems like the A. Maybe even the T got a little bit on the, the thicker side. The nice part about that, though. Touch more with it. I'm just kind of on it. Not going to do a ton here, but uh, I'm enough that it looks like the heavier weight was uh, intended. The other challenge I had with my F here is that um, my lines aren't exactly parallel, but yeah, adding in a little bit more I think kind of helps it out some. This probably still gets a little too thick here, but uh, I mean it's a sketch, so I'm not going to fuss over this too much. Um, let's see, I'd love to hear about your TypeWest experience you're hoping to apply to the Type at Cooper extended program. Yeah, um, so what I did learn is that, uh, I know some people know this, some people don't, uh, Type West actually used to be Type at Cooper West. Um, the letter form archive here in San Francisco uh, used to host that program and then eventually kind of made it their own program. Uh, but I highlight that because, uh, at least from what I've been told, is they're, they're pretty similar programs um, kind of in their DNA. Because I think Type West, a lot of that really uh, evolved from Type at Cooper. Uh, even some of the teachers that I had uh, it looked like they they actually taught both programs so there might even be some carryover between the two that way um, so the type at, uh, type West program is similar to the type at Cooper condensed program as far as I can tell uh, where everything was done in one year and uh, it was three 10 week sprints that we did um, or terms as they call it but it felt more like a sprint um, and my uh, my uh, cohort was the online cohort, so they did two. There was an in-person and an online one. Um, and ours was led by Juan Villanueva, uh, who I think if you look up Juan Kafka, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, I don't even know if he's here or not today, but uh, if you look him up, especially on like uh, Instagram and that kind of thing, uh, you can kind of find out more about him and, and what he's up to these days. He's uh, now developed a program called Type Electives, uh, which is really cool and worth checking out as well. But um, but yeah, his his program, uh, it sounds like, was probably pretty similar to still what, what Type It Cooper does, where um, we ended up designing text typefaces. And, and kind of the idea behind that was, 
uh, basically creating kind of like a foundation of knowledge and type design. Uh, the idea that if you can design a really good text typeface, that you can take that and apply what you've learned to things like display type or windings or whatever it is you want to do. Um, and yeah, it's, I mean, 10 weeks goes by quick, especially with the amount of knowledge that, that they threw at us. Um, and he brought in a lot of wonderful people. Uh, he had a, a secondary teacher alongside for the core class each of the three terms. Um, we had guest lecturers, we had guest critiques. Um, you know, office hours, there was history classes, all sorts of fun stuff. And you just, you learn a lot and you meet a lot of people. And I would assume uh, Ted and Cooper's probably the same way with that, um, especially if you're doing an in-person program. But I mean, overall, I, whether you do one or the other, uh, I think they're extremely well put together. Uh, at least speaking for Type West, it was extremely well done. I think I got a lot of value from it, learned a lot from it. Um, uh, as Karen Chang said at, at Type Weekend one year, uh, the, I think it's kind of turned into a classic, the more I learn, the less I know, if that makes sense. Um, and, and that's kind of what I walked away uh, feeling, because prior to Type West, I was doing a lot of, I guess, kind of loosely educational content on YouTube, which I plan on getting back into. But, um, but yeah, it was just, you know, you, you get all of this knowledge and, and, and being around other people who are excited about Type you learn about new resources. Um, my my bookshelf behind me here has just exploded with type specimens, with vintage type specimens. Um, but uh, yeah, it's I, I could drone on forever, and I probably already have. But um, but I will say, especially if you're applying, um, at least speaking for for Type West, I know they're looking for people who have kind of a stronger interest in type than lettering. Um, and certainly, I think some people in their application, they did include some lettering pieces. Um, but they're, I think they're kind of usually looking for somebody who at least has, uh, they've kind of dabbled in some experiments with type, even if it's just a basic font. Um, I don't think it really needs to be super polished or anything like that. Um, but just something that shows that, that you're, you're kind of doing some, some personal work or personal exploration of type. Um, if you're more the lettering side of things, I'm sure you'd still get a lot out of it, but but that's usually something that they had mentioned to us to kind of keep in mind. So I I presume it kind of works the same with Type It Cooper, but uh, again, I never applied to Type It Cooper, so um, I don't know specifically what they're looking for. But yeah, that was, uh, like I said, a bit long-winded, but hopefully that kind of helps a little bit. Um, and I do know too, if you do type at Cooper, you actually get to take, I think uh, Ken Barber actually does a class too, so you'll have my jealousy to contend with. Um, I think he's a really amazing artist. Actually, they have a lot of amazing people. I think even um, Tobias Frere Jones teaches a class, potentially. So all that's to say, you get to meet some really awesome people. Yeah, um, I think we've been at it now for what, a couple of hours, and I think my voice is probably about done here, so I don't know if I'm going to do a, uh, a fifth um, type cooker here, but uh, what I will do... Um, if you do want to try it. I think, was this the fifth one? The tough part is on, on random mode here. I don't know. I probably should have been keeping track of it a little bit better, but um, but I think that would have been the fifth one if you wanted to play around with it. Um, but what I'm going to do is uh, we're just going to pop pop up all of these that I did. We'll see if it fits. That was kind of my other thing with doing four letters is um, maybe I kind of have to play a little bit of moving around here. <laughs> we'll see if this fits. It kind of does. Holy cow. Uh, there we go.
Yeah, absolutely too. Uh, as I'm jumping back to Kelsey here. Yeah, um, and feel free if you have any other questions, just hit me up on Instagram or something like that. I'm always happy to answer more questions if you've got them. So, and same goes to anybody, really, if you're watching this now or later. Um, because uh, truthfully, I love talking about my experience with these programs, but um, I mean, I'll add too, it's, you know, whether we're talking Type of Cooper or something else, um, I think what's so cool about type design these days is that uh, there's there's a lot of great programs out there, which actually even up to a couple years ago wasn't, wasn't entirely the case, so um, I think now's a, a better time than ever to, to jump in and and learn this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, it's kind of funny looking at this now because we actually, we have kind of two of the same here and then two that ended up being completely different. But um, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully everybody had fun with this. Um, you know, judging by the, the response that I got with all of the, uh, the, the retweets on uh, Typo Social or the story sharing on Instagram or likes on my posts. Um, it seems like this has been a lot of fun for people, so I think we'll keep doing this. Um, if you have any other ideas for, for stuff we could do on stream as well, I'm also open to that. Uh, one thing I was going to tease here is that um, I don't have anything set in stone yet, but I'm actually considering some workshops uh, maybe in the next couple months here. Uh, that is something that I was doing back in 2021, um, and obviously as we're talking about Type of Cooper and Type West, I'd taken a break from that just to focus on my studies, but uh, it's something that I know that people were uh, excited about, um, so that's something that I'm definitely willing to consider doing again. Uh, just for some context, uh, usually I was doing like a Saturday-Sunday kind of thing, um, just to kind of maximize you know, when people could uh, join or view those. But, um, but yeah, we had a lot of fun in the past. We did some Intro to Glyphs classes. Uh, I did some uh, Northside sketching classes where you can kind of learn how to sketch like this uh, a little bit more and kind of going into more detail. Um, and then usually what I do with my classes as well or my workshops is I like to include a, a lot of critique time as well. Um, at least personal, from personal experience, um, that's 90% of the reason why I signed up for most of them when I when I did work, uh, ad hoc workshops. So I like to, to try and bring that value to, to those who go. But um, those are just a couple ideas. Um, like I said, uh, Instagram, particularly, my, my DMs are always open there if you have any other ideas for stuff like that. Um, so I'm always open to, to hearing thoughts on that. And same goes for uh, live streams as well. I mean, we're doing sketching today. We've done glyphs in the past. I've considered doing, um, you know, like uh, book specimen sharing, um, which, uh, you know, I suppose we can have some fun here real quick. Um, but I always thought this would be kind of fun. This is actually something that we did in um, at Type West. Uh, Rob, who is uh, Rob Saunders, who is the uh, I guess the, uh, the owner, the president of uh, the Letterform Archive. Uh, I can tell you that was some of our most favorite classes, uh, where we would just pull a book open and um, you know, just kind of thumb through it a little bit. This one doesn't exactly lay very flat, so of course. Uh, I don't know how all of this will work, but but I could do stuff like this as well, um, and it's kind of fun. I I mean, some of the books or the specimens that I have are, are fairly common ones, so um, but it's kind of fun to go through this stuff, especially when you're doing things like type cookers. Um, you know, some of the things that I'm keeping in the back of my mind are things that I've seen in books like this, um, just as I kind of flip through here. And sometimes you find different ideas, old ideas that have been lost to time. Um, <clears throat> you know, naturally I'm saying this as I'm randomly thumbing to common typefaces we still see, like Garamond or something, but <laughs> but I think you kind of get the, the drift. Um, but yeah, I mean, so many of these things have different core things, so. Um, plus it's just kind of fun to share this sort of stuff as well. Um, I'm going to 
want something a little bit larger so we can see. Yeah, um, those are a whole bunch of different ideas. I figured at some point I needed to, to toss those out and, and, and kind of see what people thought. Yeah, um, again, thanks to everybody uh, who showed up. If you if you drew alongside me, can't wait to see what you drew. If you just watched, um, you know, thanks for popping in. Thanks for everybody who uh, said hi in chat. And um, yeah, I think we'll have to go ahead this again soon so that's where we're going to leave it here um if you aren't following me on instagram that's probably where i'll i'll do uh future posts letting everybody know when i'm doing this again i think loosely though for stuff like this i'm aiming for maybe once a month just so it's it's not too often but um don't want to keep too much of a a, a time gap between everything so yeah uh thanks everybody and we'll see you on the next stream